The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 23, Another Girl. One morning before the sun had risen from, beyond the t from behind the Tetons, two grizzlies wandered across a meadow. Immediately, Nampa and some other boys grabbed bows and arrows and leapt onto their horses. Jimmy heard the commotion from his sleeping robe and jumped up. He strapped his quiver across his chest. Where are you going? Old Mother asked. Bears! They will eat you alive, Dawi. You stay here. Washaki stood in the doorway and held the flap open. Let him go, Old Mother. Dawi is not in the cradle board anymore. Old Mother stepped back. The grizzlies stood on their hind legs, growling in rage as the horses circled, Pinto being charged close enough to let Jimmy fire six arrows. When the bears finally dropped to the ground, there were so many arrows bristling out that they looked like two fat porcupines. A strange odor wafted from their fur. That evening, the camp held a powwow and a feast. The first bear meat, the first bear meat tasted bitter to Jimmy, but the longer it simmered in Old Mother's stew, thick with roots and mustard seeds, the more savory it became. Jimmy was thankful she no longer served him yaha. Several singers sat around the drum, keeping time with their sticks. Washaki stood nearby, rattling a gourd and lifting his voice high above theirs. His headdress trailed down his back and his hair was braided. A silver hoop pierced each ear. His long, sleeved plaid shirt was made from cloth he traded for at Fort Hall. It hung to his knees and was belted at the waist with a beaded sash. Around his neck was a length of blue silk fastened by a silver scarf slide from Germany. The chief sang with his fi face raised toward the night sky. A circle of dancers surrounded a rack where the bear hides were stretched out like huge dark wings. Jimmy faced it with the others, moving clockwise, lifting his left foot high, then stepping with his right, over and over, left and right. He had learned this friendship dance months earlier, but this was the first time he joined in eagerly. This was his family now. This was home. He trilled his tongue in song. Mozo sat in the shadows at the edge of the fire with the other elders. He laughed when he saw Jimmy, a laugh of affection. The little Taibo isn't so brave, he said aloud. If a bear grabbed Dawi, he would run like the rest of us. Old Mother sewed the holes in the smaller of the two hides and made a wonderful new sleeping robe for Jimmy. Nampa gave the claws to him. Nampa gave him the claws to string into a necklace. A few days later, another small band joined with Shockies. The girl who'd hit Jimmy with his fishing pole was there, and at first she glared at him, but when she saw how well he was treated by the others, she began to smile. Finally, she met him by the creek. I am very sorry for hitting you that day, she said. I'm not. Is that so? Yes. It was my kind of fun. By the way, girl, you are ugly as fish. Jimmy didn't know why he felt so mean. Dawi! Old Mother stepped from behind a willow. Her voice was soft. You make up with this girl. No more fights. No thanks. I'd rather dunk her in the river. Jimmy punched the girl's arm and smiled at her. She seemed to like his method of making up. Come to our teepee and play with me, Dawi. Your mother and that big knife of hers will turn me into t into Taibo stew if I do. No, my parents are sad for all the trouble we caused. After that, Jimmy called her Big Fish Girl, a name she didn't mind one bit because now, like Nahani, she blushed in his presence. The warm days of summer were nearly over, and the berries along the foothills had been gathered. Now that the hunters had finished their work, the women hurried to tan the remaining elk hides and make toda and make ta-o. Soon they would be trading surplus buffalo robes and buckskins for red blankets, beads, calico guns, and cooking utensils. When Jimmy heard they would be trading at Salt Lake City, he became thoughtful. What if he saw his family? What if they saw him? Jimmy worked even harder now, hauling all of Old Mother's and Hanabi's water. He led Red into the brush and returned with a travois loaded with wood for them. All teasing had stopped. No one called him Squaw anymore. Early one morning, Jimmy helped the old mother stretch and stake down a moose hide to dry in the sun. They heard giggling from behind a pine tree. Two birds watch you, old mother said without looking up. Jimmy saw two dark heads duck out of sight. More giggles. Old mother worked over the hide as if nothing were unusual. Suddenly, the two dashed for the woods. Nahani and Big Fish Girl. Jimmy was glad Nahani's wound from the grizzly had completely healed. 
but he wasn't glad about her, her companion. What was Dawi going to do with two girls? And that is the end of chapter 23.